Hello, I'm sorry I'm not able to be here today. Unfortunately, I'm sick, but I wanted to make sure that I covered my responsibilities for our slideshow for Ron before you took your quiz today. I think it's important to understand why Iran is covered as one of the case studies for the AP6. Um, first of all, it's an interesting choice because it is in the Middle East and it's the only Middle Eastern country that the College Board has picked, but it is atypical of the region. It's surrounded by Arab countries and it's not an Arab country. It's, it, it, it's not um, culturally um, or linguistically connected in the same way. Um, for example, most people in Iran speak Farsi, not Arabic. Uh, most of its neighbors are Sunni Muslims and they are Shia Muslims. And so it is atypical of the region. So it's an interesting thing to pick to represent the Middle East as our case study, when a matter of fact, it doesn't really represent the Middle East. Um, it's interesting that it's a theocracy. It is the only theocracy that we're going to cover as a part of the AP6. And so that provides it with a unique opportunity to contrast the role of religion. And then lastly, it's um, interesting because of its Islamic revolution that happened in 1979. The College Board likes to ask questions asking the students to compare and contrast the different case study revolutions. And so something to keep in mind as you're reviewing for this quiz and for our next week's unit test is how the Islamic revolution is similar and different to the Mexican revolution, the Chinese revolution, the cultural revolution, and the Russian revolution. So it's important to note that Iran is a mixed or hybrid regime because it has some quasi-democratic features like competitive elections. And so it really blends a mixture of some authoritarian features with some democratic features and it's important to understand that it's categorized in that way. The median age in Iran is 27 years old. And that is really important to understand for this case study because it means that most of the population in Iran has actually no memory of what Iran was like before the Islamic Revolution in 1979, and that it has largely experienced only economic stagnation under this current regime. And so when you look at things like the protest movement, it's important to note how disproportionately young that protest movement is, as well as when you look at the unemployment rate for Iran, it's important to look at how disproportionately young that unemployment rate because that is an important sort of rift within the country. As I said before, most people speak Farsi, which is um, a change from the rest of the region where most of the region people speak Arabic. It is a diverse population. 60% of the population is Persian, 20% are Azeri, and the rest are Kurds, Arabs, and Baluchis. Um, it has the fourth largest reserve of oil and the second largest reserve of national gas. Um, the first largest national reserve of gas it, to, to note is in Russia. Um, this is an important point of comparison between the AP6. All of the AP6 have um, significant amounts of oil, and so that is important. Even though there is a lot of diversity within Iran, because it is so different than the rest of its region, and because it has historically had these similar boundaries, um, the political culture is highly nationalistic, and they have a big sense of national identity as a country. And definitely within Iran, and I think that the role that the United States has played with Iran has fed into this, there's very much an us versus them type of mentality. And, you know, the, the Iranian people feel very united against the United States and sometimes feel very united against the rest of the world even. Looking at how the Iranian government is organized, um, the country is divided into 30 ostans, which are the equivalent of provinces, but they have limited authority. It's important to note that Iran, just like the United Kingdom and China, are also unitary government systems. Um, frequently, the College Board likes you to compare how unitary governments um, are different or similar and how federal governments are, are similar or different. So it's important to keep in your memory banks which category each country is in. There are two really unique social institutions um, to Iran that are not in, for example, the other countries. If we take a look first at the Revolutionary Guard, they were set up um, after the Islamic Revolution in 1979. They were a paramilitary force and they were seen as the core of the faithful. And it was tasked with defending this new regime and destroying rivals, including, for example, organized communists, organized ethnic groups, things like that. Um, they also fought in the Iran-Iraq War. 
um, and they they are controlled by the supreme leader. But in recent times, they have become more independent. The Revolutionary Guard has its own ministry, army, navy, and air force units. The Revolutionary Guard is deeply involved in Iran's economy, and that's one of the ways that it has become more independent. They are involved in Iran's economy both legally and illegally. Um, they smuggle goods into Iran and they make money off of it, but they also own economic assets like construction and telecom industries, which are legal, and they use that as a way to you know, keep their national power. The other institution I want to talk about is the Basij. Um, it is a people's voluntary militia, and it was formed after the revolution as well as a grassroots civil defense force. It wasn't as well trained as the Revolutionary Guard, um, but it definitely promoted a nationalist and religious fervor. And um, Iran depended on the Bazich more during the Iran-Iraq War because more of the Revolutionary Guard was off fighting in Iraq. It is also controlled by the Supreme Leader. Nowadays, it has turned into more of a public morality force where it has like, gone to um, enforcing a very specific interpretation of Islam and trying to make people behave in a certain way. Um, in 2009, it was also used to break up protests. And its members have historically come from poorer backgrounds. Um, and they use this membership as a way to increase um, benefits, like increasing access to education in Iran. And it's seen as a way for upward mobility. The ethnic and national identity of Iran is important to understand. As I said before, like 60% of the country is Persian, okay? But there are three significant minority groups. The first are the Aziri, they're 16% of the population, they're in the north. Um, they are also Shia, but they don't speak Persian, and they're related ethnically to Azerbaijan, which is a neighbor. Um, there has been increasing tension between the Aziri and um, the government of Iran because there's been increasing tension between the Iranian government and the Azerbaijani government. And so that has contributed to this tension. The group that you hear the most about though is the Kurds. The Kurds are 10% of the population. They organized an armed revolt in 1979 and they want to join with the Kurdish area in Iraq and Turkey. Um, there is a growing area in Iraq of Kurds that since probably about 1991, have been slowly trying to sort of organize for themselves to be independent from Iraq. They do not have independence from Iraq, but they do have some limited autonomy. They're also organized um, Kurds who are fighting for freedom. They would call it freedom in Turkey as well as in, um, in, in, in and they really want to form like a uh, country called Kurdistan, and they want to have political independence. Um, Iran does obviously not want to have them become politically independent. It does not want to lose that territory. And so this is an area of increasing tension in Iran. Um, the last group are the Baluchis. They're on the border with Pakistan and with the other Arab neighbors on the Persian Gulf. They are Sunni, so they are also Muslim, but they are from, of a different you know, type of Islam. And um, they complain of discrimination and have organized protests and there have been instances of violence. One thing that I think is important to note is that Iran, unlike some of the other countries that we have covered, like the United Kingdom and, Ch and China, has not devolved power to ethnic and religious minorities as a way of appeasing them. Okay? Non-Persians have historically had few opportunities for education or media in their own native languages, and there are very few Sunnis in government. And so I could see a question on the AP exam or questions on the AP exam asking you to sort of compare and contrast how Iran deals with its ethnic and national minorities in comparison to other countries. Factions are important to understand. There are two primary factions in Iran. Um, if this term factions is hard for you to understand, think about it in terms of the United States. Within the Republican Party, there are multiple factions. Like there's the Tea Party faction, and then there's more of the mainstream Republican faction. Or within the Democratic Party, there's the Bernie Sanders, very socially liberal crowd, and then the more moderate mainstream Clinton crowd, okay? Um, but the two primary factions in Iran are the conservatives and the reformers. Okay? The conservatives oppose democratization or the return of the faith um, to being in the social arena as opposed to the political arena. They believe that faith must be central in politics and they are definitely supported by the Revolutionary Guard. They also, as a separate question, do not want reform and liberalization because they see that as being imposed upon them by the West and they are worried that that is going to 
um, water down the influence of Islam in um, Iranian society. The supreme leader does not favor economic reform or liberalization because he does not want to do it um, and with this concern of watering down the role of Islam. And also he does not favor increased positive relationships with the West. So it's important to understand that he's in that camp. There's also a reformer camp. And they call for a reduced role for Islam in politics and favor rule of law and democratic reform. They do not believe that political power can be re reunited with Islam until the re return of the Mahdi. Um, Mahdi. Um, they feel that politics is corrupting and should be kept at a distance. And this faction has agreement on political change, but not necessarily on economic change. Okay. The College Board likes to compare the role of factions um, between case studies. Particularly, I've seen a lot of questions trying to get at comparing the role of factions within Iran, Iran and China. And so I think it's important to not lose your understanding of the role of the populace versus the elitists or the princelings in China. Lastly, I want to cover two public policy issues that I think um, are frequently addressed on the AP exam and that show the complexity of Iran. Because Iran is a um, Islamicist country and because it believes in Sharia law, there could be an assumption that you would have that they would be very conservative on issues of drug and alcohol use and on family planning. It's important to understand that Iran does have rules against consuming alcohol or drugs because that's against Islam and they don't have a difference between Islamic rules and government rules. Um, but despite this, there's been an increasing role of smuggling and drug use has really become a significant public health problem because now there are one million drug dependent users in Iran, according to the United Nations. And these drugs are coming in from Pakistan and from Afghanistan. And the Iranian government has realized that punishment doesn't solve this problem. Historically, they've used punishment as a way to try to deter people. Like they've given harsh punishments for using and they've even executed people for being dealers. But they have realized that this punishment is not actually solving the problem. And so they have increased the role of treatment centers and rehab centers in the country and increased um, the numbers and funding for them. And so to me, this is an example of how the government is focused on promoting a particular interpretation of Islam, but they also want to have public policy that works. And so I think that that is interesting, that even though this is considered something forbidden, they still want to help people be successful. The other example that I wanted to talk about was family planning. Um, Iran has had a variety of different rules about fam family planning, but currently the um, interpretation of Sharia law allows for birth control. This interpretation um, changed in the 1980s when the ec economy faltered and Iran's unemployment started increasing. And so in response to this, in 1989, Ayatollah Khomeini changed its national family planning program and set up these goals, that women should wait three to four years between pregnancies, and that women should only have kids between the ages of 18 and 35, and that women should try to only have three children. Um, as a way to try to promote this, um, they restricted maternity leave after three kids starting in 1993. And the government and education health ministries have included family planning in their curriculum. And so this is really a message that people have gotten all throughout Iran, is that family planning is important. And normally in a religiously conservative country, you wouldn't necessarily see that. But I think that's important to note that that is something that's going on in Iran. And it's been a significant public policy shift in that from 1986 to 2001, the average number of kids that women had fell from seven children per woman to less than three. Um, in part, this has happened because the government covers 80% of all family planning costs. Um, one of the strengths of Iran's promotion of family planning is the involvement of men. Iran is the only country in the world that requires both men and women to take a class on modern contraception before receiving a marriage license. It has a government-sanctioned condom factory. And um, the government also promotes the idea that men should get vasectomies. Um, and it doesn't account for the majority of, like, the way that people do family planning in Iran, but it is an example of like how the, the, the government in Iran has really tried to increase um, the role of family planning as a way to try to control their um, population. Um, they also obviously have, have done a lot to try to promote um, 
female sterilization as well as the use of other um, forms of birth control. I think it would be possible when you're thinking about ways to compare and contrast Iran and China, to me how they've dealt with the desire to decrease their population would be another area for comparison. I hope that this helps you prepare for your test and I wish you luck. Bye-bye.